The liberation project can be revived only also if the economy of Africa take an overturn away from those so-called partnership, those so-called numerous summits where 54 African head of state come before one head of state of one country. It's not about only dignity. It's about self-respect. The military build-up under the pretext of fighting against violent extremism, terrorism. When you look at the map of Africa today, and you look at the level, the extent of foreign military presence on the continent, as a historian, I cannot but remind me of what has happened at the end of the 19th century, the period of the conquest and colonization. There are more military presence on the con foreign military presence on the continent today than even in the 19th century at the time of the colonial conquest and colonization. This is really worrisome. So, the scramble, the new scramble for Africa is today a threat, continued threat for the development of the continent. It's a continued risk for the stability of the continent, a continued risk for the unity of the continent. This, these are facts which are documented by all researchers in the field of the economy, politics, security. The continent is driven into geopolitical rivalries among competing powers of the world from all sides. This also is a fact, a reality. Therefore, the issue today for us as Africans, for us as progressive Africans, for us all as committed to a better world, committed to international relations, geared to the benefit of all the peoples of the world. To be aware of this situation and to take action. So the question remains how to do it, what is to be done. The dreams of the founding fathers and mothers of the Organization of African Unity, who created that continental organization, those dreams have to be investigated again, revisited, and we must reflect on how to make them to make them come true as 
students, young men and women, those days girls, when the AU, OAU was launched by Kwame Nkrumah and his peers, we were expecting Africa to rise up. Our leaders to help our people create the conditions not only for the political liberation of Africa, as Kwame Nkrumah put it, he said, create first, seek first the political kingdom and everything else will be added on to it. It is true, what was the first phase? We have seen in my young age when I was uh, in secondary school, I have seen in less than a few months so many flags coming out of the African continent. As Harold Macmillan, the Prime Minister of Britain used to say, This uh, continent, Africa, the wind of change is blowing over this continent of Africa, whether we like it or not. So many flags were raised, new national anthems. But we have seen that new flag national anthems are not enough for liberation liberation mo needs more than what go beyond those signs like national anthem and national flags so we, we are very very excited thrilled about the creation of OAU at that time. But decades later, we have to acknowledge the fact that we must go beyond and break the colonial ties in the field of the economy in the fields of politics to assert real sovereignty for the continents, its governments, and its people. This is what independence is about. Therefore, we are faced today with an obligation, a moral as well as a political obligation to revive the liberation project as a total project, a project of renaissance for our continent. To do this, of course, I'm not a candidate for any election <laughs> to put forward a program, but I sincerely believe from the experience that the revival of the liberation project can be effective only if we engage to reshape the course of African history at different levels. 
First and foremost, the present situation, it is obvious that the new scramble of Africa and the way it plays out stems from the leadership crisis on the continent. <clears throat> Africa needs a new leadership to reverse the dynamic unleashed this by this new scramble. The issue here is about to consolidate the democratic governance on the continent. The rule of law, transparency, uphold civil liberties, transform qualitatively political parties which tend more and more to become cliques who are governed by self-serving leaders, ambitious leaders. We need vibrant civil societies in Africa who can tell the truth to any power that be. The press is important on educating and informing the people, not only on their rights, but also on their duties as committed citizens to move Africa forward. Africa has to get rid of populist politics, ethnic politics, we need humble leadership. Africa need leaders who have visions, who reflect from the realities of the past, the future of the continent. We need thoughtful leaders. <clears throat> the ideals of Pan-Africanism should be revived among the African citizenry. So the project of liberation, of reviving the, 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 the liberation project is also about the unity, the cultural unity of the continent. To regain our dignity before the world. We Liberation projects can be revived only also if the economy of Africa take an overturn away from those so-called partnership, those so-called numerous summits where 54 African head of state come before one head of state of one country. It's not about only dignity. It's about self-respect.
shall, shall we remain providers of raw materials, non-transformed products? Let our arable lands to be auctioned by international investors who will come produce goods, produce food, and export it while our populations are dying of hunger? No. African ag agriculture has to be redeployed in such a way to feed the Africans. For this transformation to happen and in order for that to happen, not only we need inventive leadership, committed leadership, dedicated leadership, but we need also other segments of society to be mobilized for the economic redemption of Africa. We should not be just so-called partners of multinational corporations. We must have a better ambition. Our ambition should not be to become ever comprador bourgeoisie. But active business people, committed business people who have at heart the well-being of the African people. It is today imperative but our education system make a break from the colonial type of education we had so far so that our education system will produce, transmit and produce knowledge which enable, will enable our people to stand up in great numbers, in millions, to understand the world in which we live in and to be armed with the ambition to participate in the progress of humankind in every sector of formation, education, scientific innovation. This is what the renovation, what I call the rebranding, the liberation agenda is about. The scramble of, for Africa, the new scramble which is taking, part, uh, 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 taking uh, shape now is about also weakening the continent to prevent them from harnessing all the potentials of our population through all, it, all their segments. It's on the basis of the weakening of the African continent that the new scramble can continue and last forever. We have to avoid this at all costs. The energies of millions of young people, inventors, scientists, educators, civil society organization, women organization, 
who are keen, mobilized to make this continent once more a continent of hope, a continent of progress, a continent where the people, human beings, will be restored in their dignity. We belong to a generation which had, as I said, high hopes on our continent. We will never despair. We are optimistic. As comrades in arms, I call all on the progressives on this continent through this rostrum to join for the new struggle to devise new strategies and tactics to make the revolution in Africa a reality according to the dreams of the Founding Fathers. I thank you for your attention. I'm a king, yes, I'm a king, I think. I'm a king, though.